Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is all about a frequently asked questions video. I said that really weird. Um, I asked you guys if you had any questions regarding editing specifically on my YouTube channel and on Twitter. And these were some of the questions that I pulled from that. Some of the most common questions anyway. But first I did want to say, Subscribe if you have not and if you like writing related videos and if you're trying to write a book and then make sure you hit that notification bell and sometimes I actually with my last video I had several people like five or six people privately message me and say that they're not getting notifications and I'm not sure why I tried to do some research but the best answer that I could find even though they've hit the notification bell they're still not getting notifications so try to take off the notification bell and turn it back on, if that makes sense. That's always like the answer for everything. Turn the computer off, turn it back on. That was the only solution I could find or try unsubscribing and then resubscribing and doing the same process. But anyway, I know a lot of you who are subscribed are not getting notifications. So I'm gonna try to put this information like on Twitter and Instagram and on the YouTube community just so you guys know for sure. In case you're not aware, my videos are like picking back up regularly again. Anyway, let's jump into the video. Of course, as soon as I say that, my camera starts to die. <laughs> we'll see how far I can make it before it dies. Okay, so the first question that I have, and these kind of, they're not really in, in any order. Um, so I may touch on a topic and then talk about it again in a little bit, but first question is from Jacqueline Eulenfeld. She asked, what should I look for during the first round of edits? what should be my focus. So editing, I just wrapped up a novella, which really taught me a lot more about editing and sort of made me have a better relationship with editing because I did not like editing during my process with the Elysian Prophecy. I didn't really enjoy it, but so first round of edits, how I do things, a lot of people do it different ways. First round for me is always huge things and I strongly recommend people do this. I do not recommend you go through and line edit. I don't think that you should look for issues like that because if you end up, if there's a huge issue and you end up having to scrap like 20,000 words and then sort of redo those, if you sit there and you line edit those 20,000 words and you perfect them, you're just gonna throw them away. So you wanna address the biggest issues first. So first round of edits, like once you complete your first draft, first round of edits is always the biggest issues and I always make a revision plan. Um, it's I use Google Documents, so I just make a document, I organize it by chapter and I go through each chapter. I like to do a read through and find the biggest issues. I kind of do like a skim through. Um, once you get to the end of the first draft, you have an idea of, you know, maybe in at the end you wrote something that you want to put in chapter three so i kind of do that while i'm first drafting i will go through as i'm writing if i notice anything i'll note it down in my revision plan so i already have some some an idea of what i want to do so once it comes to first draft i don't really do a total read through i just like i said i skim through a lot of times i'll look at my outline because i try to keep that up to date until the first draft or until the first round of edits and see if I notice anything from there. So that is the like big things, plot hole issues, like a character, if you have major things happening with your characters, moving around chapters, things like that, big stuff. Question two is from Brittany Starr. What's the main point of your first edit? How many edits before revise? What's really the difference between the two? So editing and revising are totally different. I guess editing, um, I guess, Actually, my first round of edits could be more like revisions. I just like to think of them as edits because I'm changing something in the book, but really revisions are any major change that you make to the story, any plot related issues that affect the story as a whole is more what revisions are about. So if you have to do any revisions, um, those are the first, those are, you wanna do your revisions before you do your edits. So I guess I kind of misspoke a second ago. I use them interchangeably because I think of it all as the editing process, but really revisions are the huge things like that you need to revise and that you may need to cut an entire scene and rewrite the whole thing or change how things happen. Those are big picture like 
revisions. So I wouldn't do any edits before I did the revision process, like I said, for the first question. All right, third question from the writer's scene. When it comes to editing, I hear some people pull up a blank document and write their second to third draft from scratch, essentially starting over. Have you ever done this for editing? I have not, and I think I got several questions about this. Um, I think that this is only really necessary if there's major rework to be done, and this is pretty much like a revision of your entire book. If you need to majorly change something, I've thrown away large sections of my books before and rewritten a lot of it before, but I've never just started from the beginning and totally done a new draft. I don't know of many authors that have done this. Victoria Schwab is somebody who's great to follow on Instagram because she posts all the time sort of about like writerly mental health and the issues that she has, even though she's a traditionally published successful author. She still faces issues of self-doubt and all that stuff, but she's talked before about um, actually Vengeful that just came out. She had to rewrite the entire thing, like scratch it and totally rewrite the entire thing after working with her editor for a while. So it does happen, but I think it's very extreme and sometimes stuff like that just happens. If you get to the end of it and you, the end of your first draft and you realize that things didn't go the way that you wanted or you don't know how they're going to go in the the second book in the series or the third book in the series, you may need to do a full rewrite, but I've never done it personally. All right, next question is from Samantha Jarman. How can you be sure you haven't missed any major plot holes? Okay, so I don't know if I'm gonna say this again or if I had another question related to this in a second, but um, okay, so your plot holes. Basically, you wanna note any plot holes while you're writing your first draft. I feel a sneeze coming and you put that in your revision plan. Um, so you go through and you make those big changes, those big picture changes or revisions. And then after that, I go into line edits and I read through and I will mark up each line, I'll rewrite each line, I'll, I'll make notes saying this sounds weird, like rewrite for later, I'll do stuff like that. What was the question? <laughs> and usually once you do a full read through, you'll see any bigger plot issues. They'll kind of like, you know, it's easier to notice them once you do an actual read through because before this, you've only skimmed. If you're following my method, I've only skimmed until this point. So reading through and doing a line edit, I can see those other plot issues that may have trickled through and may have, may have, I, whew, I may have missed the first time. But essentially the answer to this question is your betas will help you find the plot, the glaring plot issues. Then they should be really good at, good at this. Um, if you have good betas, I have, I need to do another updated video all about betas. But so once you do your line edits and you go through and you incorporate all that, that is when I feel that my manuscript is ready to send to betas. And then that's when I get their feedback and any big plot holes or character issues or world issues or anything like that they'll let you know. They should let you know. Question five. The Beesman asks how to stop editing. Every time I read one of my chapters, I have to change something every single time. Um, this happens to everybody. And this is why I recommend, I strongly recommend if you are new to writing, if you haven't gotten, if you almost can't trust yourself yet, which well, if you're a new writer, you can't trust yourself. Don't think that you're one of them that can <laughs> because you'll just end up like shooting yourself on the foot in the long run. Don't edit while you write. This is something that you can learn to do and in future books you may be able to practice. But if you find yourself falling into the editing trap and editing too much while you're writing and then you're not writing anymore, you're not writing any new content, you're just constantly in a loop and you've not finished your first draft. You need to stop editing while you're writing. That's just the plain, you're not allowed to do it. And I used to use, so I used Scrivener for my novella. I used Google Documents, but I typically use Scrivener while I'm drafting a document or a, a manuscript. And I, my different scenes, I make it a point. I almost like put a lot of space between scenes that I'm writing. So. I can't, in the beginning I did this, I don't have to do it now, but 
um, so that I can't see what I wrote before. Because a lot of times when you come, when you sit back down and you start writing again, you you your eyes just like go up and you're like, oh, and you start to read what you wrote the day before, and then you start to edit it. Don't give yourself that opportunity. Camera died, so sorry, I have moved. It's gonna be a weird jump cut. But anyway, I think I answered that question. Um, if you can't stop yourself from editing, don't let yourself edit while you're drafting. That's just the plain um, truth of the matter. Which, that's when you're drafting. So I'm not sure if that's what he was talking about, but I think I have another one that I'm gonna talk about in a second. Um, oh, actually, it's the next question. <laughs> Erica Everhart said, any tips on avoiding the over-editing overload? Um, I'm not sure what she meant by overload, but in terms of over-editing, which I think maybe the previous question might have been asking, is um, if you find yourself that if you find that you cannot stop editing again and again and again and again, and you feel like you've edited your manuscript ten times over, and you just keep editing and keep editing, eventually you just have to let it go. And for me, this pretty much happened when I started to get sick of my own manuscript. I had just read it so many times and changed so much about it. And I swear I probably, I had probably rewritten about 75% of it. I, by the end of everything, I had just, I kept rewriting. And, and there's certain parts of your book that you will rewrite a bunch of times. A lot of times it's the first few chapters and then the last few chapters or like the chapters around your climax that you just like really want to nail. You want to nail all of it, but those are the ones that you just like, you know, you sweat out a lot. So I hope that answered that question. I hope that's what Erica meant. Um, next question is from Brandon Preventure. Editing dialogue, his question is, editing dialogue to make it feel more natural and not so stiff. So a lot of times when you first draft some dialogue, you go back and read it and you're, it's like nothing how you had imagined it in your head. <laughs> you read it and you're like, oh, what was I, what? That just sounds horrible. If you find that you can't edit it to make it sound more natural, more natural, what I like to do is say it out loud. I try to say it in the inflection that I intend the character to have. So I'm literally sitting there talking to myself. Don't do this in a cafe or something. People will think you're crazy. But I will sit down and I will say out loud what I intended for the character to say. And a lot of times it helps to get into the character's head and to try to like, you kind of have to immerse yourself for a second and maybe practice some lines and throw some lines, like just say them out loud before you actually write them down. I find that helps me a lot if I just say it out loud. Um, and saying all of your dialogue out loud will also, sometimes when you read it like quietly, you don't notice that there might be something awkward about the phrasing or the dialogue, but when you say it out loud, that can help. So while you're editing, that's kind of a bonus tip to um, say all of your dialogue out loud. <sighs> right, Holly Davis asked, how do you tackle incorporating beta feedback? So this is why I need to do another updated video on betas. I, my first round of betas with the Elysian Prophecy was very thorough and I like learned a lot about what I needed to fix and got a lot of feedback, but it was too much feedback. I think I had about 20 betas in one round. So I didn't do like multiple rounds. I did one round. I mean, I did do multiple rounds, but I had like one round of 20 betas. So it was like, it was too overwhelming. It was too much to process and go through. So incorporating beta feedback, I like to stick between three and five betas. And I, I use Word to, I will send each of my betas a Word document and then they'll send me back their track changes in the Word document once they're finished with it. And I um, merge all of those into one document. So all of their comments and all of their suggested changes are in one single document, like one master beta document. And I can't tell you off the top of my head like how to do that. I know it's in the review pane. You can like merge documents or something like that, but, or merge review, I don't know what it's called. But I do that and then go through like start to finish. And then that's actually my new working manuscript document. So the one that I had sent and like my finalized one that I sent to the betas, I don't use that anymore. I use the one that, <clears throat> which is so important that your betas understand that they need to use track changes. If they don't, they just change things that messes things up. So they need, it needs to be a track change that they need to do a track change. <laughs> 
I swear, I need a voice coach, like a vocal coach or something to tell me why my voice does this. A lot of times if the betas um, in their email or their summary tell me that there's like a big glaring issue, sometimes I'll tackle that first and figure out what I'm gonna do with that first before I go through like line edit stuff. But typically that's how I do it. I merge it all into one document, go top to bottom. Anyway, I've drank like three liters of water today, by the way, which is, so it's not my voice. That's not why my voice goes crazy. So next question, Tina Girl asked, how do you convince yourself that it's okay to write a basic, mildly decent, kind of crappy first draft because to have to edit isn't a sin? How do you combat perfectionism? This is a problem like every writer has, I feel. And you know, like I said, once you get more experience and once you, once you work with several projects, you may find that you can edit while you're writing to make it a little more polished as you go. But first drafts, you just have to accept it. It's hard for anybody to accept. I'm a huge perfectionist. Like my, like I think my pre-K teacher pulled my mom aside and was just told her she was concerned because I would get so upset when I colored outside of the line when we were coloring. I cut like I was in pre-K and I was like, you cannot color outside of the line. That's not what you do. So I have had to combat perfectionism my whole life, which doesn't make any sense because I'm a totally messy person. That's gotta be different things. But I totally understand every writer has this problem. When I first started writing, I, sorry, I feel like I keep getting like hair in my face. When I first started writing, you just think that all the great books that you read and all the traditionally published, published books that you've read traditionally published books that you've read are all, they just first draft are amazing. And they're like perfect little beasts. And they're like in amazing packaging and all the words are perfect and everything. That is not how it happens. That's not how it happens. You have to go through multiple rounds of editing, period. And you cannot edit something and you can never finish your book if you don't write the first crappy draft. So just make it your goal. Don't make it your goal to write a perfect book, first draft. You want it to be as good as it can be, but you just need to write a crappy first draft. Like to me, I fast draft my first, um, my first draft. I try to do it as fast as I can because I know the changes that I want to make. I know, you know, what I want to happen, what didn't translate well from my brain to the page. I know all that stuff as I'm writing. I'll just like make a note of it, I'll keep going. Because I know first draft is supposed to be crappy. It's never supposed to see the light of day. Most people don't let people read their first drafts and it can take a long time for you to develop a writing routine where you can have more polished work on your first draft. But that's like way down the line. That's like once you've been an author for a while. Don't worry about it right now. Just accept that you need to write a crappy first draft. Don't think like, oh, like my, my writing is terrible, whatever. You're realizing that something's wrong with it and that's a huge step. Like you're just you realizing that means you've learned something since you wrote it and you can, you can fix it. You can always fix whatever problem you have in your book. There's always a solution to it. Anyway, I feel like this video is getting really long and my lighting changed again. Mm. Next question is from Beanie Babe. When editing, what are some tips you suggest to make the process less stressful? Um, I kind of already answered this question. Use a revision plan. I always use a revision plan. And if I haven't, like the Elysian Prophecy, I had to kind of make a new document with a new outline document because my first outline, got a little wonky and I had to move chapters around and split them and so I started with a new one. So I basically do, I review it, I go chapter by chapter, make sure my outline matches up and then as I'm going chapter by chapter I do that revision plan and it just makes everything more structured and it's easier to see the changes that you need to make and I do like a little, it's in a Google Doc but I do the little check boxes so I can like check off once I, when I finish each one or just do like the strike through text or whatever. So it's basically just a big to-do list, like a giant to-do list. And 
I get to do to do list anxiety, but for some reason I don't when I do it this way, when I do it chapter by chapter. It is a lot to see at one time that like, holy crap, I have a lot to do, a lot of work to do on this book. But it's just like one of those things you have to chip away at it day by day. And I've already set aside like a month or something like that to make these changes. So I know I'm not gonna be able to do it all in one day and I try not to think about it, that it needs to be done fast. So Jay, next question is J Arvid Flock asked, should I get feedback on my first draft or edit the problems I know I have first? I answered this question already. <clears throat> you need to go through your own edits first. You need to try to make your novel at least go through two rounds of edits. Like I said, like the big major things and then your huge line edit that you do because it's not very nice when you send like for feedback, I'm guessing you're talking about betas or critique partners. Critique partners, you can usually send less polished work to, but betas, you definitely want to send um, pretty polished work because you don't want to have to make very many changes after that you already know you need to make. So if you already know you need to make it, you need to make it because betas are basically there to tell you what you missed and what you overlooked. Matt Arman asks, when do you send e-arcs right before editing, while editing, or when the process is done? So this is an interesting question because <laughs> I sent e-arcs. Advanced reader copies are typically sent, even by tra traditional publishers, a lot of times they're sent before it's like final proof copy. So there can be some proofreading errors, there can be minor typos in the document, and so that's basically in the middle of the editing process. You definitely don't want to send it before editing, but um, I sent it while I was editing, so before I had sent it to the proofreader. And you just have to do this at your own risk because even though I sent it to a bunch of people, I sent arcs out to a bunch of people um, and told them it's not a totally finished proof copy and that there are typos. I told them specifically there are typos because it has not been sent to a proofreader yet. I still got negative reviews posted on like, I think three on Amazon specifically saying that there's typos and that they received an e-arc. So you have to do it at your own risk. There will be people that will not read that little note that you made and they won't understand that. So in the future, I'm going to send e-arcs once everything is done. And it's been, it's gone to the proofreader because I don't want those negative reviews, especially when I told them that was going to happen. So do it at your own risk if you're going to do it while you're editing. Diane B. D. asks, could you tell me if you ever actually print your manuscript out to edit or do you do all your edits in Scrivener? I do all my edits actually in Word documents. So like I said, when I sent to the beta readers, when I send it to my professional editors, everything's in Word document. It's just too difficult to try to transfer Scrivener documents over. I keep all that stuff in Word documents. I did like, so for my first book, and I think for the second book in the Illusion Prophecy, I'll end up doing this too. For the novella, I did not print it out, but uh, it was a shorter book, so it was kind of easier for me to work with. So for the Illusion Prophecy, I went through and made my huge edits. Um, that I knew I needed to make my first round of edits and then for the line edit portion I did print it out so I could read catch more mistakes catch more errors and I could you know it's kind of easier to once it's like printed out on paper to read it and see like oh this is just worded weird like change this you just like mark it up and it's easier to it's almost quicker that way because you go through and you you're like, oh, awkward rephrase or, you know, so you quickly know what you need to do and it's kind of like another revision plan. So I have printed out before. My novella I didn't print out and I did all the changes in the Word document. I basically did the same thing and went through and made comments and I changed as I went along. But like I said, it was obviously a shorter work, so it was easier to do that. In the future, I do think I will be printing out the first, um, or I'm sorry, the second the second round of editing after line edits. Last question is from Chicky Scares. <laughs> is how do you spot the mistakes our eyes are too used to seeing? So this is when you've read it a million times and you've looked at your work a million and one times and you don't see that when you write a sentence it says the, the dog went to whatever. 
you have like repeat words that you've just missed a bunch of times that your eye just kind of like looks over. I'm sorry, I don't know what's wrong with my voice. So one of the solutions to that is to print out your book because like I said, it helps you. My voice is just totally failing right now. It does help you to see it, see your book in a different light almost. What I did one time and I thought really helped is to actually change the font before I printed out my manuscript. So you're used to seeing it in like Times New Roman or whatever it is you're writing in. Change it to like Garamond or, I don't know if I said that right. Um, book Antiqua is another one that's commonly used. Change it to another font and it kind of like resets, like you, your brain isn't used to seeing it that way. So you, you, it's easier to notice those mistakes. Another way, if you have the time, if you want to, by the time I was got to this point with the Elysian Prophecy, I was like sick of my manuscript. So I didn't do it, but you can use any like text to speech software. Um, I think actually Alexa, like your Amazon Echo will read an ebook. Like you can have it read your ebook for you. If you like set it up in your Kindle, you know, like if you publish to Kindle and have your own copy or something like that. Um, and so if you have any text to, or speech to text to speech software like that, and you kind of just like listen, it's easier to notice when the narrator who, or whatever software it is says a word twice or it's a weird word that you thought was the right word or it's the wrong tense or anything like that. So if you have time, that's another way to notice errors that you might have overlooked. Actually, yes. Um, before you go, comment down below the next frequently asked questions topic you want me to cover, be that self-publishing or first drafting or any life writing life balance, stuff like that. Um, working with full-time job, let me know because there's always, you know, I make a video on a topic, but there's always people who have a lot of questions and there's a lot of people who are wondering the same thing. So anyway, I will see you guys next week with another video. I hope this is really helpful. I hope it answered more of your kind of like random or like smaller editing questions that I haven't addressed in previous videos before. And yeah, I guess expect an updated beta feedback video soon. Links for everything are down below. So if you wanna know, just go down below. I have a lot of links. So anyway, I will see you guys with another video next week. Bye.